Hey and welcome to Studio Wildlife. In today's video I am going to be creating a tiger eye study and just going through my process of how I add a little bit of life to my paintings and some tips on painting fur and painting eyes. I am using some paints that Amber got me for Christmas, these Winsor & Newton Professional Acrylic Paints. Um, I'm going to give them a try. There's only 12 colours, I think, in there. Hopefully you can see those. Um, so I'm going to try and keep it relatively simple with the colours, just using these to show you what you can achieve with just a small paint set. Although I think I am going to cheat because I cannot see any burnt umber in this set and I would like to use a little bit of burnt umber for this painting so I will just use some burnt umber from another paint set. So I am going to use some burnt umber and burnt sienna from another paint set. So there's some burnt umber. Here is some burnt Sienna, although they are pretty much the same colour. And I'm going to try and make this a little bit different than my usual just straight up fill the canvas. I'm going to try and make it a little bit edgier and I'm only going to fill in, in fact I'll just show you. So I'm just going to take my two colours and I'm just going to, no water, I'm just going to very roughly just block in this rough sort of base. And I don't want to fill the canvas all the way. I'm going to leave this like rough border on the edges. You don't have to do that. Feel free to go all the way. Uh, that's just my preference for this picture. Just trying to make it a little bit different. Just trying to rough it up a bit. Doesn't have to be absolutely perfect my plan with this picture and then yeah just gonna let that dry okay now that is dry I'm just gonna grab a pencil from over here and I'm just gonna sketch out my eye and a few of the stripes so I'm just gonna start out with where I want my eye I'm just wondering whether I want it in the center or off center I think I'll have it in the centre. So I'm just going to start by drawing a large sort of semicircle, which is going to be the iris. Think about where the pupil's going to go. And then there is the black around that iris that I want in and some extra parts of the eye that you might be able to see the white of the eye which might not necessarily be visible black underneath the eye trailing off into a stripe on that side and then into the rest of the face on this side. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing on the camera. It's quite hard to see because of the lighting on my end. Then we want to start putting in a few of the stripes. So we're going to have, oh well let's start underneath. There's going to be the white underneath the eye. But this is all going to be that white but we'll talk about it later but it's not actually white. Okay, there's going to be a little bit of that white, but not white, up here, all of this up here is going to be that white as well, as well as some of this. So that's going to be white, that's going to be white, all of this is going to be white. Now let's look at some of our stripes. So I want some black stripes just under here maybe a couple of loose ones just small ones just coming off just like that then I want a nice big one 
starting off quite thin up here, but then coming down just underneath this eye, just like this. That one. And then maybe I want another one just coming down here. This. Another small one. Here, I'm not being like super precise with it. A couple of little bits, maybe join those up, maybe that'll look a little bit better. And then let's have a little bit of a framing one here almost coming up kind of like this. Oh, and maybe this is where the, the white We'll start again a little bit here. Then here we just want, this is just the nose basically. So I just want where that nose starts. Just like that. And then we'll fill that in as we go. Let's have a look at the top. Okay, so I want this part just joining up here. And then this is just gonna be black all the way to the top just like that and then we're going to put a nice big stripe up here curving round all the way to the top that we'll put some overlapping hairs on later and then maybe just above the eye another little small one and then a big one here going all the way to the top I'm leaving gaps where the white of the canvas is showing through, but you don't need to do that. You can just go all the way to the edge of the canvas if you want to. I'm just trying to make it a little bit more interesting and a little bit more challenging for myself. Then over here, we want just a nice, simple one going all the way up to the top. And maybe another Little one curving off on these edges a little bit. And then maybe just round here, just a couple more, just smaller little bits that you sometimes see. Okay, and there we go, that's the drawing done. Okay, on to the painting side of things now, or the next step. And I'm just gonna start by blocking in the stripes just using a filbert brush and the black paint. No medium, no water, just black paint straight from the tube. And all I'm gonna do is just start coming in and just start blocking in these stripes. Just pure black paint, nothing else. Rather than just blocking the basic colours, I'm trying to think about my brushwork a little bit as well. And what I mean by that, and what I'm actually doing, is I am blocking in my stripes, but I'm using my brush in the same direction that I would like the fur to go. Which means I'm not leaving sharp, solid edges to these stripes. I'm leaving them quite rough, almost like overlapping fur. And you're going to see that a little bit more when I actually start adding some colour and some lights and some shadows. But yeah, just to start off, I'm thinking about that brushwork just as much as the colours that I'm putting down. Okay. I think we'll just let that dry now, and then we'll move on to the next step. Now I'm going to just start thinking about my shadows, so my form, um, my highlights, and my colour. 
a little bit more. So to start with, I'm just going to take a larger filbert brush and a little bit of water and just some raw umber paint. And I'm going to keep it quite thin. The raw umber is quite transparent anyway. And I'm just going to look for areas of shadow. And I'm just going to start putting this colour over those areas of shadow. And I don't mind going over the blacks because I'm going to do them all again at the end. Anyway, just trying to put a little bit more colour variation into the painting. Round here, round here. A touch of it here as well. Right, if you want you can go even a little bit darker and just take a little bit of the black in there and a little bit of the burnt umber as well. Water it down a little bit and we're going to just put a little bit of this colour just in some of these darker, darker areas. Okay, then we can start trying to go a little bit lighter. So just clean that brush off. We've got a paper towel here. And I'm just gonna dry it off. Doesn't matter if there's some of that excess paint on there. And we're gonna try and mix up a little bit more of an orangey colour. So we're gonna take some of the yellow, a little bit of red, mix those together. We get a nice orange. Then we're going to take some of our yellow ochre, mix that in a little bit more. Then we're going to take a little bit of that burnt umber again and mix that in. And we're going to just add this to our highlight areas. So up here, I'm going to have some of this up here all in here and I'm just using that big brush and just following the direction that I want the strands of fur to go in. It is going to get worse before it gets better. You've just got to be persistent. I'll have a little bit of this colour In here, just a little bit, a little bit of this glow towards the edges as well. Okay, then just using some of that orange that's still on the brush, we're going to put a little bit of blue in there. What that is going to do is make it a little bit more grey. Because orange and blue are opposites on the colour wheel, so they desaturate each other. A little bit more blue in there. Okay. Then I'm going to take some white. Still looking a little bit on the green side. So I want some more blue. Maybe even a touch of black in there as well. Just a tiny little bit, not a lot, just to desaturate. More blue. A little bit more black. There we go. This is the colour that I'm after. Just going to water it down a little bit. And then this is going to be my first layer. Just to show where those whites are going to be. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to come in with this big filbert brush. And just start looking at where these whites are going to go. Just blocking in. Just like this. Doesn't need to be absolutely perfect straight away. And it doesn't matter if some of that orange shows through. Having that variation is only a good thing. Just getting that colour underneath the eye. And you can see how I'm just following the shape. The direction of the fur. All that brush work, all those brushes, 
all moving in the same direction. Just large brushwork, not very precise, I'm not worrying about tiny little details yet. That's going to be the next step. We're just getting down a nice bit of colour, identifying our shadows and identifying our highlights. And then we want a little bit more of this white just underneath here. It's coming up a little bit, a little bit along this edge as well. Okay, then I'm just going to let that dry. We are going to work on the eye itself now, and to do that I need the smaller filbert brush again, the one that we used for the black stripes to start with. So I'm just going to give that a good clean, and then we're going to start with a little bit of the raw umber once again. And I like to do my eyes in the same way, it doesn't matter what I'm painting, my eyes aren't realistic eyes. They don't look like photographs. I want to try and put life into the eyes that I paint. Um, and to do that, I do sometimes need to deviate from the reference photo quite a bit. But I'm going to share with you my secrets for painting eyes that appear to have, or at least I hope they do, appear to have lots of life. So every single one of my eyes, no matter how I do it, no matter what the lighting is, I always put shadow at the top of the eye and light at the bottom of the eye. I just think it helps to give it that like marble look, that glass look, and it helps to bring the life to the picture. So I'm just using some raw umber here. I'm just going over the pupil. The pupil doesn't matter at this stage. And that shadow colour is staying in the top section of the picture. Okay, just like that. We've got our dark. So we can go a little bit darker with that. Maybe a little bit of the black and the burnt umber mix. Just near the top. Okay. Then we want to go a little bit lighter down here. So I'm just going to take the burnt umber to start with. Just going to fill in this extra space, just blending the paints together. Okay, then we want to go a little bit lighter. So I might take a little bit of the burnt umber and then some yellow ochre just to increase the opacity and make it a little bit lighter. And then I'll just do the same thing, just down on this bottom edge. Just start to Add this slightly lighter base colour and then just blend it in with what I've already got down. Now just like that. Now we need to just let that dry a little bit. Don't worry if you go over the black. You can always paint over it again. Just try and keep your paintings quite smooth unless you want it quite textured. And just blend it together. So we just need to let that dry before we start with the next stage. Okay, now we want a little bit of yellow ochre mixed with some of that orange and we're just again just starting to get a little bit lighter every single time we do this. Now you might be able to see I've not carried that yellow ochre right down to the bottom. I'm going to leave that as a little bit of shadow that we can see. I don't mind having a few little like scratchy marks of paint showing through. That is perfectly okay. Don't worry about that. So clean my brush off. 
Okay, we're gonna get a little bit of the burnt umber, just water it down, and around the pupil, just want a little bit of a, a lighter orange just around that. It doesn't have to be absolutely banged on around it, but I just want a little bit of that lighter colour. Just like that. Then we can start thinking about some of the details. So for the details, I'm going to use, first of all, this small, tiny, tiny number zero detail brush. And to start off with, I just want some of that orange that we've put down before, but quite watered down. And around our pupil, we're just going to come in and we're just going to put a few little very watery lines moving outwards surrounding it doesn't have to surround it exactly moving outwards just like that and then maybe around this edge we can go a little bit more again just moving outwards radiating out from the center of the pupil. We can go a little bit lighter with that, so maybe a little bit of white, maybe a little bit of yellow ochre, just yellowing it up a touch. And just in some places here, just a couple of little, little lighter marks. Okay, just like that. Then I want to take a tiny little bit of the black and mix it with some raw umber. And then again, quite watered down. I'll come in and again, same thing. Just these lines coming out from the center. Just twisting round, looping, just abstract, messy lines. They don't have to be perfect. Again, I'm not going for ultra realism. Just want the impression of a super realistic eye. Then within that, I might take a little bit of olive green. Put just a hint of green just in some places in this eye just moving out just like this might blend some of the layers together I actually want a little bit more of the orangey burnt umbery colour so I'm going to take a little bit more of that and just put a little bit more of this in here just in some places Maybe even out towards the rest of the eye, just a little bit. Okay, then I can start thinking about some of the lighter colours. So I'm going to take some pure yellow ochre to start with. And just again, watered down. I'm just going to use it and we're just going to come in. I'm just going to put in some of these lines just throughout the eye. They don't have to be amazing, remember? They don't have to be perfect, just putting them in. You can go over the shadows. I'm going to do some glazing later so it's all going to get knocked back. So it's just these weird little loops just all over which is the impression of this detail impression of the patterns in the eye which we're going to glaze over soon and we can take some of the yellow a little bit of the red and we can create a brighter orange. 
and then we can do the same thing. We can just go over what we've done, just a little bit more variation. Some of this orange, just over, forming these different layers of colour and patterns and shapes, just like this. Bring some of that in if we want to. We can put some little marks in there. Put some around here. Literally do what you want with it. Then we're going to take some white, mix it in with that orange, create a really light colour. It's going to look super light. It's going to look too light, really. And what we're going to do is just come in and we're just going to put in some more of these wisps just along the edges. Just up the eye, just like this. Come water it down. Put a few other little marks just in places, just building it up and then we can take some more white, we can use some pure white now, just doesn't matter if it goes a little bit off white, that is fine, we can take some of this pure white and we can just come in and we can put some final little lines just along the bottom here just like that and then we're just going to leave that to dry and in a second it's all going to start to come together and look a little bit more alive and a little bit more glassy with a couple of glazing steps okay so that is now dry what we're going to do is we're going to take some lemon yellow and a touch of red, mix them together to create a nice vibrant orange. And we're just going to use the round number three brush and we're just going to water that orange down and just glaze it over everything that we've done so far on this eye. The whole thing. Whether it's in light, whether it's in shadow, we're going to glaze over the whole thing. Okay, remember, it doesn't matter if it goes on the edges. That is perfectly okay. Then we're just going to let that dry as well. I'm just going to use a hairdryer to speed up the process. Then we're going to repeat it, but this time we're just going to make a slightly darker orange. So I'm going to take a little bit more red, a little bit more of the lemon yellow and a little bit of the other yellow as well. We're just going to try and create a slightly darker orange and then same process, loads of water. I'm just going to start to add this glaze over the top as well. We can be a little bit more conservative with this one. We don't need to go over all of the light areas. We can leave a little bit of that light showing through. Not all of it. Some of it. And then we're still going to make sure we go over some of those shadows as well. Just blend it all together. And then again, we're gonna let that dry. And this time we're gonna go even darker. So we're gonna get some of the burnt umber and we're just gonna take some of the orange that we've already mixed up. I'm just gonna mix those together. Now we're gonna use this and just start in that back and forth motion. Just gonna start to glaze a little bit more 
detailed colour over our eye and these shadowy sections just a little bit more just these lines going over take some of this put it underneath there's a bit of a shadow put it around the edges Because it's a thin glaze using water, some of those details are still showing through. Right up the edges. Here. Can, have, can even knock back some of this light if you want to. Doesn't have to be as bright as this. Right, and then we can do the same thing, but now just get some of the raw umber, sorry, the burnt umber. And just take a little bit of the black and a touch of blue. Just gonna mix those together and we're just gonna create another shadow colour that we're gonna just over the top, just in these shadow sections, we're just gonna come in. Building over the top and put a couple of this, a little bit of this darker colour, just thin it down. We could come in and just put a couple of little darker marks, darker lines in our lights if we wanted to. And we can go even darker with it. A little bit more black, a little bit more blue. Right over the top. Just trying to fade it. Those colours that are underneath. Water it down a little bit. Let's put some glazing on there. And then we can actually do the opposite type of glazing. So we can actually just take some of the lemon yellow and a little bit of the red. It's a tiny little bit of the red just to make it a little bit more orange. Too much red, too much red, more lemon yellow. And we can do the opposite now. We can go a little bit lighter. All along this bo bottom edge, just a touch lighter. Just a thin glaze, transparent glaze. And we can take a little bit of white. We can mix it in with our oranges. And again, just really, really light, really watered down. We can just come in and we can just put this slightly lighter glaze over what we've done. And then we can take our detail brush. We do exactly the same with a little bit of the, the white mixed with the orange. Just very, very watered down. We can just come in. We can just pick out a few little bits, and then we can just knock it back. A little bit more. So I'm going to come in. Just pick out a few more little bits with the white. Then I'm just going to. Knock that back a little bit with the other brush. So you can still see some of that detail, but not all of it. You can maybe even take that a little bit higher up. 
And then I'm just going to take some of my yellow again. And I'm just going to glaze over this light just to give it a bit of a glow. Just like that. Now, I can get my pure black and I can redo my pupil just like that. I can make it a touch bigger and I can also redo the edge around the eye. Which should hopefully make it pop quite a bit more. We can even take some of this black Thin it down with a bit of paint and we can just put a tiny little bit more shadow just over the top. Of our pupil. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect because we're going to cover this with some highlights in a second. Okay, so for my highlights I usually take some blue, a little bit of red to create a purple and a little bit of a raw umber just to neutralize it a little bit and that's the first colour that I will use with a touch, just a speck of white. And then quite watered down, I will come in and I will block in my first section that I want my highlight to be in. And there's a trick with highlights that they're not just little blobs. The, the highlights are usually reflections of the animal's surroundings. So you don't need to have that but I like to make them a little bit more blue later on just to symbolize a little bit of sky in the background or in the surroundings of the creature that you're trying to paint. So I usually start off with a big section that's, well, quite dark really, it's not really a true highlight. Then I take a little bit more blue, mix it in with that colour, and a little bit more white. Let me take this, and then I start filling in just near the top, some more of this highlighted colour. It doesn't have to be completely perfect. It can sometimes even look like there are the reflection of trees, So I try to not make it perfect. And we can go a little bit lighter, a little bit more blue. And just repeat that process. Just over and over again, just getting slightly more blue near the top. get a little bit more white in there. Maybe there's some clouds so we can go even lighter. Put these little reflections of clouds in there. Maybe a little bit of a glow just over these trees. 
kind of just water it down a little bit. A little bit of that, another bit on. Water it down a little bit more. Just want this bit super transparent. Reflection there. And we can go even whiter. I'd stay away from pure white. You don't really need it. But now I just come in and just put a couple of little random blobs of pure white in there. Well, not pure white, but light. And now the proper trick to creating realistic looking reflections is quite a lot of the time this is something that people forget but all the hairs up at the top here they are going to cast reflections so I just take a little bit of black mixed with a little bit of raw umber and I just come in and I just put a few hairs probably should have waited for this to dry Just these reflections, well not reflections, actual hairs, or the shadows of the hairs from above. Right, I'll just take a little bit more black. I didn't wait long enough for this to dry. You should definitely wait for it to dry. Popping in these shadows. And there we go. Just going to start to create a bit of a, a bit more of a shape to the eye. A little bit more. A little bit more detail. Okay, then we can take a little bit more blue, mix it in with that same colour. Just gonna take a touch more. Just like this. And go a little bit lighter. more grey, so some white, a little bit of black, I just want to put a little bit of this just up here, just like that. Then we're going to take our small detail brush. And we're going to take a little bit of blue, a little bit of white, and we're just going to come in and we're going to start putting in a few little bits of texture, just on the bottom section of this eye. Just a bit of texture, nothing else at this moment in time. And go a little bit more white and grey with it. A little bit more in. Okay, then we are going to get some of our black. And we're just going to do the same thing but from the bottom 
little bit of texture, just knocking back some of the stuff that we've just put in. Just using it to put in a little bit more texture. Take that black and we're just going to separate with a couple of more solid lines these two bits. And I'm just going to very, very, very thinly just knock back some of this. It's a little bit bright. Using it to dull it down a touch. Again, same thing at the top, just glazing in a little bit of shadow in there. Okay, then I can take some of the blue. I'm just going to create a very, got some paint on my brush, very sharp line, all the way above. What we've just put down, all the way, all the way along. That, then we can get a little bit lighter blue. Just come in and just put a thinner line over where we've just gone. A little bit of water down. Details, maybe take a touch more of that and just pop it underneath here, just a little bit more, maybe a little bit just under here. And then we're going to take a little bit more white. Just in a few places, just like underneath here. A little bit more light. And then that is the eye finished. Okay, now that the eye is done, I can start working on some of the fur around the rest of the head. And to start this, we're going to just put some detail in. And I'm going to do this with an orange, a light orange first, and then I'm going to do this with a dark, oh sorry, and then a light white as well. And then we're going to do some glazing. So I'm going to start with a little bit of yellow ochre, a little bit of red, and a little bit of the cadmium yellow, just to create an orange, and then quite a lot of white to start us off. I'll show you this colour in a second. And we're just going to start with the small filbert brush at this stage. So here it is, this is the colour, and all I'm going to do is just use this to start putting in some little strands. Just starting off. In fact, I'm gonna swap my brush. I'm not gonna use the filbert brush. I'm gonna use the small number three round brush for this. I think that'll be a little bit better. 
And yeah, I'm just going to come in, that's much better, and start putting in some of these hair strands. Okay, I'm leaving plenty of gaps, allowing that colour underneath to show through. That's really important. That we're letting that colour underneath show through on this picture. It couldn't be any easier, this section. It's just literally coming in with one single colour. Just starting to give the impression of this, this fur. I'm going to do lots of glazing as we go through this and really, really build it up. I'm making sure to curve off the fur. I'm using different pressure, varying it up a little bit every single time, just so that it doesn't look exactly the same. That is one of the my, my biggest pet peeves when I look at beginner's work is every single one of their strands of fur looks exactly the same. They all just look identical and it just, it just ruins the picture. Make sure that you're mixing up like the, the direction slightly, the size, the thickness, which way it curves. Put that variation in there. Okay, and then same thing, a little bit of a bluier, whiter colour. Do this down here, where some of these whites are, all up here, like that, then onto this section as well. Same for the top up here. Okay, now this is done, I'm just going to let it dry. Now we can start thinking about some of those nice, bright, vibrant colours that we want showing through. So I want the big filbert brush for this, and I'm going to start with quite a saturated orange. So I'm going to take some of our yellows, a little bit of red, Right, quite a bright orange, and that's going to be our first colour. I'm just going to use this, and I am just going to glaze it over. It almost looks yellow. Glaze it over some of these stripes and areas of fur. Okay, we're starting with that colour. Then we want to get a little bit more orange, so we're going to get some of the burnt umber in there. And we're just going to repeat that process. Just again, just getting a little bit more orange every time. Take a little bit more of 
this and just water down but I'm now just using some of the burnt umber just coming in just glazing over a little bit more of this colour Okay, then we're going to get a little bit of the burnt sienna, a little bit of raw umber, a little bit of black, mix those together and then again just with a little bit of water just going to come in Put some of this shadow colour down. Okay, then I'm just going to take a little bit of that brown again. Mix it with a little bit of the blue. Try and create a dark bluey brown glaze. A little bit of black. And we're just going to use this colour. Just glaze some shadow over this section of the fur. Maybe a touch just over the eyes. up here just like that and a little bit of that just there okay we're going to just let that dry and then move on to the next layer and then we are going to come in now with the small detail brush and we're going to get some of the burnt umber mixed with some of our black and create a very, very dark colour. And then we're going to use that colour and our small detailed brush. To just start coming in and putting in a few small dark strands everywhere. Maybe even go a little bit darker than that if we want to. Get some more black in that mix. I'm going to start to just come in, start to put these tiny dark strands. The darks are just as important as the lights. When you're doing paintings of fur, you need that dark in there, otherwise it just doesn't work. You need it as like showing some of the different fur coming through, some shadows. Really make it look like it's made of lots of layers. I'm just laying the fur down in exactly the same way as before, still leaving gaps, just working with a darker colour now. I'm going to do all the orange fur first and then we'll move on to the whites. It's important that these are in the shadows and the lights, but they don't need to be as prominent in the lights. You can have less of them. Starting to build it up now. It's really starting to get somewhere. Just continue filming 
to my uh, Instagram. Get a couple of shots for that in, and then just back to it. Getting all these darks on. I'd normally be spinning this around um, so I could paint it a little bit easier but I can't because I'm filming um, but I do apologise if my head keeps getting in the way of the camera. I'm filming on two cameras so hopefully it will be okay. Okay, there's the dark coloured up. Zoom in a bit and start putting some lights in. So I think we're going to start with a nice orange. So we're going to get some of the burnt umber, in fact it's raw umber that I'm using. Some yellow ochre, a little bit of cadmium yellow, and a little bit of red. Well, try and create a nice orange. Start to put in. So taking this orange and just looking for a couple of areas where this might be nice. Watering it down a little bit more. Picking out a few little sections. This might actually need a touch more white in there just to make it a little bit more opaque. It's not quite as visible as I want it. Coming in now and just picking out just some of these lighter areas. Continuing, build up. These colours. Okay, once I am happy with that, I can go a little bit lighter with the orange, a little bit more white in there. Thin it down a bit. Just in some places, I just want to pick out a few more little highlights. Okay, then I can take quite a big bit of white, mix it in. And now I'm just going to come in and put in some very, very delicate strands. Very, very light, very, very white. We're going to glaze over these later, but these are in the highlights. Just putting some final touches on these highlighted areas. Leaving plenty of gaps, letting the colours show through. Just putting that little bit of extra detail on here. top as well. Some of these finer hairs. Just like that. Might even just put a hint of these just carrying on a little bit up 
here a little bit more detail just in those sections there. Okay, we'll leave that as it is for the time being, actually. Just gonna pour a little bit more just here. A little bit more just there, like that. So we're gonna just leave that as it is for now, just let it dry, and then we're gonna work on the white areas and really make them pop a little bit more. So we want this area underneath the eye looking much lighter now. So again, we're just going to use that small detail brush. It's perfect for what we need it for. And we're going to come in with a white mixed with just a tiny hint of that creamy yellowy colour to start us off with. Maybe even a little bit of raw umber in there just to grey it down just a touch then we are going to use that and start to add in some of our strands just like this keep it quite transparent plenty of water Bring it together a little bit more, bring it over some of the shadows that we've already put down. The fact that we're doing it quite transparent is good. It means some of these colours will show through, which is what we want. Then we may as well finish off that section while we're here. So we just want a little bit whiter. Again, quite watered down. And we're just going to come in and just pick out a few sections where it might just pick up a little bit of light. Maybe put a touch more of this light just there. Cool, then we're going to go back to that original colour, done with a little bit of grey in, and with it being quite transparent, quite watered down, we're going to start to just come in here, just come in and put a few finer hairs back in. Okay, then just near the eye, just with this small one, we're just going to come in, just pick out a few of the smaller strands, just these thin ones, just knocking about, it's got me casting some of those shadows over our eye. And then up here, we're going to use a slightly different brush because we want some of the strands to be a little bit longer, um, which in fact we'll come to that in a second. We're going to continue using this small detail brush for now. Just bringing in some of those lighter colours, slightly finer hairs throughout the picture. Same thing for this edge. Just like that. Then we're going to use our slightly longer dagger brush and some of the white. And we're just going to use this to put in a few longer strands. Also down a little bit. Within our fur up here. Put it down even more. Put a little bit of this. A 
light colour over here. Okay, Let's get that clean, dried off. Okay, last few things that we need to do. I'm going to just take some of the orange that I've made up earlier and we're just going to use it over some of those highlights just to bring them back into the colour scheme of the picture a little bit more. I'm just using number three round brush to do this. Okay, now we want some more glazing. Just a little bit over some of the whites here, just a little bit of a glaze back over, just sort of slightly different colours. A little bit of that shadow showing through, maybe a touch just around the rest of the eye. Then I want a little bit more shadow. I'm going to take some of that dark colour, a little bit of black. Again, just using this brush, just here's where I want it just to be a little bit darker. Just coming in with this, just treating it like I'm adding a little bit of fur. Okay, now once we've got those shadows in, we can come back in and I'm actually going to use the round brush again, not the detail brush. We can come back in with some pure black and just refine some of these stripes again, just bring them back. Still following the direction. They don't need to be completely black. And still keep some of that glazed colour over the top. Okay, nearly done, just a few more final touches now and then we can call this one finished. Just want to use the small detail brush again, just a little bit of raw umber, a little bit of the black. I just want to come in and I just want to put in a few more of these darker strands just in a couple of places. breaking up some of the fur. Then I want to take a little bit of blue and I just want to take a little bit of this blue. I just want to put a couple of strands of this blue in the fur as well. Just in with that orange. Knocking around in some of these shadows just a little bit up here. A bit more white. A little bit of this lighter orangey colour. 
I'm just going to come in and just put a few more final little highlights in. Almost yellow, really. A couple of these. Okay, then we want a little bit more of the blue and the raw rumba. Mix those together. A couple more blue little highlights just in some of these strands of fur near the top. There's a little bit more light. Then we can get a little bit bluer, a little bit lighter. A little bit just here. It's maybe catching a light just a touch. And then the final thing that we want to do is just add a few loose hairs around this picture. So I'm going to start with some lighter hairs. We just want some of the orange mixed with some of that white, quite white, not quite as yellow as before. And then we just want loads of water. And we're just using the dagger brush, with loads of water on it. And we're just using it to just pick out a few loose hairs, just thinner, slightly longer hairs, just in some places. Just like that. Then I'm going to do exactly the same thing, but I want some more white. Just a few more loose strands on the white. Just like that. And then just with the black, quite watered down, just a couple of little. loose black strands as well. Then the only thing left to do is give it a quick signature down at the bottom and then we can call it done. Well here it is all finished. It's this size so you can see it. I am going to be giving this piece away to one very lucky subscriber as a Christmas present this year. So all you need to do to be in with a chance of winning is be a subscriber, like this video and comment the tip that you found the most helpful. As always, thank you so much for your support and I'll see you next time.